Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Now based on the interest of a video that I did about 17 free vegetable gardening hacks around three months ago, I'm doing a part two showing you 17 more. And the original video was to celebrate the launch of my book, Grow Food For Free, which you can get from growfoodforfree.com. And also a few of these hacks are based on watering, which is a very important part of this time of year. So I hope you enjoy. The first hack is to use a drinks carton like this as a very efficient watering system for larger plants, for example, squash and tomatoes. So what you want to do is get your carton and poke some holes, but you want to do this on the side that you'll transplant the squash. So after you've poked some holes, dig a hole and bury it up towards the top so just the top part of the carton is showing especially the lid then you want to transplant your seedling for example this courgette on the side which has the holes once you've transplanted the courgette on the right side you simply open the lid fill it with water using a hose or a watering can and close it and let it do its thing what I love about this is that it provides water deep into the soil, which is especially important if you're growing tomatoes that have a deep root system. And it just makes it a lot easier for you. And one little tip to make it even more effective is to use a top of a plastic bottle as a funnel to just funnel in the water so you don't have to spill when you're filling it up. One of the coolest things I've seen is by a guy called Sepp Holzer who grows pumpkins and other squash really high up in the Austrian Alps. And he does this by using stones as heat storage. So what they do is they soak up the sun and warm up the soil, warm up the plants, and it really does help them. Now, I only recommend this if you keep on top of your slugs because it can create slug habitat underneath. But if you place them like this, just around both sides. I can already feel the temperature of the sun on these stones and those will transfer down into the soil and also reflect. So this squash feels nice, happy and at home, even though it's growing in Wales. A bonus hack related to this is to use water as well as a really good heat sink. So if you have a carton, you can fill this with water. If you have any kind of natural black paint or you could wrap it in some kind of black material such as old fabric, then place this down by your plant such as your squash plant and it's going to do the exact same job. There's also another thing that you can do. So if you enjoy jam or anything like this, save a jar and you can have the lid on or off place it next to the plant like this and then get a black pot and it's going to do the exact same thing and just providing a bit of heat for plants like this especially early on in the season is going to really help them another hack that i can quickly demonstrate here which works really well with squash especially during dry periods where it's a pain trying to water and then you get some rain and you want it to be as effective as possible what you can do is just use your hands to form a bit of a, a bowl or a basin around the plant so this means when it rains it helps direct the rainwater down into the roots rather than away and it's just a really quick easy thing to do that's going to be really effective when you finally do get some rain during summer months. One of the coolest things that I picked up when I was visiting Liz Orab, who has a fantastic channel by the way, was how she used pallets like this, even though she was making fences and compost bins, but as a way to store tool things. For example, tools, but also tool things like bamboo canes. And it's just a very easy way to store things like this. And because they're pallets, you can divide them up into sections. So you could have six foot bamboo canes there, eight foot bamboo canes here, and it's just really simple. One of the problems with growing salads such as lettuce during summer is premature bolting. So you can't fully enjoy a lengthy cropping period. But a quick workaround is to use shade to your advantage. So I've got a pea structure here and you can do it for runner beans as well. But you can see my shadow cast here on the ground. So the idea is the peas will grow, cast shade, so I can grow salads in here like lettuce. So they're less likely to dry out and then less likely to bolt so I can get longer harvests. 
You may be having a lot of issues with slugs. So one of the easiest workarounds is to grow things that slugs like in modules, for example, the lettuce that I've just mentioned, and to grow these as big as possible before planting out because slugs like those young tender seedlings. And when they're bigger like this, the leaves are going to be less appealing. And also if they do get a bit of slug damage, they're a lot more likely to survive because they've got a few true leaves. So that's a very quick workaround and I'll be doing a video that comes out in just a few days about the complete guide of dealing with slugs. So when that's up, you can click here and find out more. One of the easiest hacks you can do is to simply let some of your crops grow so they flower because it provides a different kind of harvest. And this is especially important if something bolts or runs to seed a bit early, like this swede, for example. And the great thing about swede and other brassicas when they flower is that these flower shoots are actually perfectly edible. They're tender, you can treat them just like purple sprouting broccoli. And the favorite that I've mentioned before on previous videos is kale flower shoots as well. So let them grow. You can harvest all of these completely edible and uh, I love them. And another thing you can do is if you're a bit fed up of radish, let that flower and it creates small green seed pods that you can chuck into salads and eat as well. One of the hacks that I've been using recently and really enjoying is if there's a bit of space and I have some spare plants, just put them somewhere. And this is a great way of being able to try and grow more food in the same space. So I saw that there's a bit of a gap here and I thought, tell you what, I've got some spare lettuce seedlings, I'll put them in there. And earlier I found some space to put in some parsley seedlings. So if you do see some area that isn't being utilized and isn't going to be swamped by something a bit later on, try and capitalize on that by growing something in that space so you can grow more for less. If your compost is fairly dry and you're wanting to sow in it and you're getting frustrated because when you're pressing down the compost keeps on falling back in on itself, then the easiest thing before sowing a seed tray or even plant pots is to give it a good water around two or three minutes beforehand. So even if it's like really dry, just water it and you'll see it soak in. Once it's been standing for about a minute, you'll find that when you want to poke holes, it's gonna be a lot easier. It's not gonna fall in. They're all gonna be the same depth and it makes seed sowing far simpler. One of the most important things after you've sown some seeds is you don't want them to dry out because this can really affect germination. And if you want to have consistent germination like this kohlrabi, for example, the trick that I use is using cardboard and placing it over the top and maybe weighing it down with a pot or something. And then every day I'll come and have a quick look underneath. And then when I see the first little sprouts appear, I'll remove it. But the thing that I really love about this method is you only have to water the seeds once until the seedlings appear because it can last two weeks without any evaporation. And if you're wanting to save a bit of time, then this method is the best. If you know anything about composting, you know it's not good to put things that have gone to seed in the compost bin because they can come back a year or two later when you spread it out on your garden and it's a bit of a pain for example dandelions dandelion roots as well and also stinging nettles and these are literally just beginning to seed but don't let these materials go to waste instead you can create what's called or what i call just made it up a dirty compost bin and this is where you put everything that is flowering going to seed all of the things that you don't really want to put in your clean compost bin leave them there for about a year or two to really break down and then you can use this compost when you're transplanting perennials so if you're growing things like black currants and you want to plant out a black currant then when you dig the hole at the base of the hole you can place this dirty compost and it's just going to do the job and it means that your garden has less waste one of the most effective ways to trap slugs is not by placing things like cardboard and planks on the actual surface of the raised bed, which does work, but I found what works better is using a plank and placing it at an angle against the side of a raised bed because I find that slugs like to return to the pathways to try and hide in cracks and crevices because raised beds aren't ever really going to be 100% slug proof. But put this down 
say late afternoon, early evening, come back the next morning, turn it out, and I'm sure you'll find some slugs. Now, if you place perhaps six or seven of these around your garden and do it every single night, it's going to be a really easy way of keeping a constant supply of slugs being trapped and not munching your vegetables, for example, these lettuce. I think every garden needs to have a homemade scoop because it comes in really useful if you're trying to scoop out water from a water butt and you don't have a connection at the base and also if you're just trying to scoop up a bit of compost. So get a milk carton like this, it's super easy and the great thing about it is that it comes with a handle which makes it even better. Then all I'm going to do is make a cut kind of around here and around and then I'll end up with a scoop that will come in handy many times in the year. If you've just started growing your own food or you're growing in containers, then you can make your own liquid feed and it's really effective out of weeds, for example, nettles, or you can grow things like comfrey, which I have here, and it's some liquid feed that's ready. You just want to tear it up put it in a bucket, fill the bucket with water, leave it for about a couple of weeks. It's gonna stink, but it's gonna be effective. And I'm now going to dilute this around one parts liquid feed to around 10 parts water, and then water my plants. There's a couple of other ways that I like to apply nutrients to the ground. And the first comes in the form of grass clippings and this should just be applied lightly over the surface and uh, you may have seen my video about how to grow food without compost so if you want to get some more ideas you can but grass clippings just spread over the top are just going to help add some nutrients to the ground especially nitrogen over the long term and provides organic matter which is crucial for a healthy soil and another thing that i like to do as well is to mix wood ash and coffee grounds so it's 50 50 roughly mix it together and sprinkle that lightly as well and this is really useful if you have a container garden or you're just starting out and there's not many nutrients in the soil it's a great short-term fix whilst you're ready or at least waiting for your compost to be made as we all know, compost is hugely important, but if you're struggling to try and fill up your compost bin or compost bins, then the best thing that you can do is to get a bucket or any kind of container, or at least a few of them, and go around your neighbors and also your close friends in terms of distance and ask them to save all of their vegetable scraps. And then perhaps once a week, go around, collect the scraps, stick it on your compost bin and it's going to fill up a lot faster and because compost is so important you'll be surprised using this method just how quick and easy it is to fill it up if you found these tips and hacks useful then definitely check out my book grow food for free where you'll find loads of other things just like this and if you're getting a little bit tired or fed up with watering then check out my video about how to water efficiently which is going to save you a lot of time so thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you again soon goodbye